Hello everyone, this is David, mobile developer, and in this tutorial I'm going to explain how to create a feedback form in a Flutter app using Firebase as a backend. The objective is to be able to provide the user with a mechanism so that he can send us suggestions, observations, or any other type of comment. The final app will work on Android, iOS, and the web. This is going to be a very simple tutorial focused on basic fundamentals. The UI that I'm going to make is extremely simple, since the objective of this tutorial is not to focus on visual interface, but instead I will focus on the following points. Firebase integration in a Flutter app and obtaining data entered by the user through Cloud Firestore. For those of you who don't know what Firebase is, Firebase is a backend as a service provider. It gives a variety of tools and cloud services to develop and grow apps. In this specific tutorial, we're going to use Cloud Firestore to store the feedback data that the users are going to submit. The only requirement that you should meet before starting this tutorial is to have Flutter installed and to have a minimal idea of how it works. You don't need to know anything about Firebase. The first thing I'm going to do is to create the project. I like to create the projects from the CLI, but you can do it from your preferred ID. So I'm going to set the platforms to Android, iOS and web. And I'm going to open the project once it's created. Now that I have the project created, I'm going to delete the default template that Flutter creates. What I'm going to do now is to create a basic screen in which I will have a button in the center. And once this button is clicked, I'm going to show a dialog in which we will have our feedback form. Now create a widget that will hold the material up, which is necessary so that we can use material widgets. I'm gonna set the main screen that I just created as the home widget. I'm going to change the initial invocation and I'm going to run the project. This is a extremely basic UI that I have created. If we click here, it does nothing. So right now, what I'm gonna do is to create the feedback dialog and I'm going to create it in a separated class to keep things organized and isolated. And this dialog will be a stateful widget instead of a stateless widget. And the reason for this is because we're going to need a controller to control the input field and this controller needs to be disposed once it's used so we are going to need the dispose method of stateful widget i'm also i'm going to create a key which will control the form so we can validate its data and this is where we're going to dispose the controller once the widget is removed from the widget tree. Now this feedback dialog is going to return an alert dialog in which we will have a form and within this form we will have the text form field which will hold 
the data and read by the user. I'm going to set the keyboard type to multi-line because we want the user to enter many lines. I'm going to add a hint so the user will know what is this form about. I'm going to set max lines to 5. I'm going to add a max length. I'm going to add a done action so the user will be able to close the keyboard when pressed on the submit virtual button. And I'm going to create a validator in which we're going to see if the user has really entered some text or not. If he or she hasn't entered anything, then we will show an error. If not, we will return null, which means that it's okay. I'm going to add a cancel button so that the user can cancel and go back. And a submit button which will try to send the feedback data within the text form field. I'm going to leave this empty for now. Now I'm going to call show dialog when the user clicks on open form and I'm going to show the feedback dialog that I just created. Here we go, we can cancel and if we click on send, nothing happens for now. And the next step is to create the Firebase project. Go to firebase.google.com. If you have an account, enter in the dashboard. If not, you have to create an account first. Then once you are in the Firebase console, click on add project, enter a name for the project. You can enter the name that you want. Hit continue. We can disable Google Analytics for this sample and click on Create Project. It's going to take a few seconds until the project is fully created. Once it's created, click on Continue. Go to Firestore Database in the left side. Click on Create Database. It will ask us if we want to start the database in production mode or test mode. So before explaining the difference between both modes, I will tell you that security is very important in any database. Since the operations that we do against a database have a cost and also modify our data schema, we want that only certain operations done by certain users are allowed. So the difference between both options is that the production mode absolutely restricts any operation against the database until we proactively add specific rules. The test mode is designed to play with the database outside of our real environment. Select production mode for now and click on next. Then select a region, it can be anyone you want. And click on enable. Now we have provisioned a database to work with, however, since we have initialized in production mode, it will not accept any kind of operation. That is, we will not be able to write on it or read or anything. So to solve this problem, we're going to add a set of specific rules. Click on rules in the second tab from the top. And in order to understand what this means, we will start with uh, the first line, which which is telling us that this is version 2 of the of this type of document. Don't worry too much about this first line. Next line, 
it's going to tell us that we're going to specify data for our cloud firestore now we're going to match any document within uh, the database and with this last block we are indicating that both read and write operations are going to be prohibited are going to be forbidden on any file this if false means that the previous operations which are read and write are disabled the result of the current state of the rules is that the database is completely locked in order to unlock it we will modify the document as follows with this statement we are adding a rule to the feedback collection a collection is a group of documents so each feedback sent by the user will be a document within this collection by specifying allow create if true we are indicating that anyone can create these documents also by specifying allow read write update delete to false we are forbidding these operations this means at the end that users will only be able to create new feedback documents they will not be able to read existing ones modify them or delete them we since we are administrators of the project we will be able to execute these actions through the console anyways click publish to apply these settings now we have the database ready and prepared to be able to write the feedback entered by the user from the app the next step is to integrate Flutterfire. Flutterfire is the name given to the plugins that integrate Firebase within a Flutter app. For this, we're going to go to firebase.flutter.dev and if we click on get started, we will have the instructions to install it. There are basically two ways to integrate Firebase into a Flutter app. Integration via configuration files, which is done in the native parts of the app or a newer automated and faster mechanism that was created recently so just follow the instructions here basically they are telling us to install the firebase CLI and then enable flutter fire CLI once you have followed these instructions now go to the project root install firebase core which is the core plugin to work with Firebase. Now execute Flutter Fire configure. Now you have many projects, you will have to select which project do you want to work for. We select the last one we created. It's going to ask us the iOS bundle ID. You just enter some ID that you want to use now if you go to the project you will see that a new file has appeared firebase underscore options dot dart this file has the necessary information to connect to firebase now we need to add the missing imports Now we need to perform some initialization tasks. I'm going to change the return type to, to a future, change async, and add this first line, which is needed for Firebase to correctly initialize. The next step is to do the actual sending so first we're going to validate the current state of the form i'm going to create a message bar which will be used to show the result of the operation to the user if we have an error we will tell him or her that an error has happened now we're going to get a reference to the collection within firestore which is going to be feedback which is 
the same name that we have used before when creating the rule. But first we have to add the Cloud Firestore plugin. Now that we have a reference to the collection, we can create a document. I'm going to add two fields, the timestamp, which is going to be the time of the server. And to get the time of the server, we use field value dot server timestamp and another property called feedback, which is going to be the, the message entered by the user. Now, whether the operation succeeds or fails, I'm going to show a message to the user with the result. Now I'm going to run this project to see if everything works. And um, I have an error. So by reading the error message, he's telling us that we need to upgrade the iOS minimum version. So we have to open Xcode. And I'm going to raise the iOS version to 12.4, for, for example. Now I can execute it correctly. Now I will try to send a feedback and I'm going to have an error and by reading the error we first see that the error message is displayed correctly and the reason is because I haven't initialized Firebase so I need to call initialize app in the main function Try again if it works and yeah, feedback sent successfully. So we go to the Firebase console and yeah, in the feedback collection, we have a document with the message we have just sent. Now I'm going to try to run this on Android. And if I try to run this on Android, I have another error and looking at the error, the problem is the minimum SDK. So the problem is that Firebase need a higher minimum SDK. So to fix that, we go to Android app, open build.gradle. I'm going to change, I'm going to change the compiled version to 31, min SDK to 22 and target SDK to 31. Now run again. Enter some feedback, click on send. Send successfully, we go to Firebase console and yes, there he is. Now the last test I'm going to do is to try to run this on web. Send some feedback again, go to the console, and yes, there he is. This is the end of this basic tutorial on Flutter and Firebase. If you have questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comments. I hope it has been useful to you. Thank you very much and happy coding.